With me on set, former White House press secretary and MSNBC political analyst Josh Ernest, politics editor for The Daily Beast and MSNBC contributor Sam Stein, White House correspondent for PBS NewsHour and MSNBC contributor Yamish Alcindor, and Republican strategist and principal at Cogent Strategies Kevin McLaughlin. Uh, thank you all for being here. Josh, how glad are you to not have the White House press secretary job this week? I'm delighted to be here with you today as well. Uh, so let's let's talk a little bit about uh, we we've, we've been we've been talking about these threads kind of uh, all all show for for John Kelly I mean what what is on the line for him right now? Can he survive this based on what you know about what it's like to be in the White House? I mean, I'm not sure that the White House you served in is entirely comparable to this one no. anymore. It's, but. It's, it's, <laughs> a little different. It's difficult to draw a lot of direct comparisons. I think uh, I think you can read some tea leaves, though. And I, I think the fact that the chief of staff had to call a meeting last week to try to tell everybody what his story and his explanation was for how he handled the Rob Porter situation, I think is an indication that Mr. Kelly himself is feeling an awful thin ice. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, I do think that this is problematic for him, in part because we're starting to see the kinds of leaks and backbiting among the White House staff that we saw, uh, pr frankly, throughout Ryan's previous tenure, which is what prompted all those questions about how long he was going to last. This stuff. Uh, and <laughs> I, this is the stuff that you like and where you thrive. But if well, you're the White House chief of staff, it's a really Josh, bad I have a question sign. for you. And I know you, your White House is not comparable to this. There was no one leaving to do reality TV, uh, <laughs> except for Axelrod, that weird venture onto the bacon shows. <laughs> Anyways, let's say there was... I, I will tell you about the, the, <laughs> about the offers I turned down. Sure, let's, say, let's, let's say there was a bombshell story, though, that was going to come out about an, a top aide in a domestic assault situation. And it was going to come out, it's at night. How does a White House go about handling that story from an operational standpoint. You're the, you're the press secretary. You know this is coming. What do you do? Yeah. The, the, the first thing you have to do is you want to figure out, uh, you want to collect all the facts that you can. Yeah. Uh, and that is, that is uh, there's always going to be in this situation some doubts. There are going to be some things that you don't know. But what you do want to do, and certainly the advantage of being in the White House, is you've got access to lots of information. You want to put it all in one place. You want to get everybody around the table. Because what you want to do is you want to be decisive. You want to make a, 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 a decision where you can draw a line in the sand and say, this is what we're going to do, this is how we're going to handle it. Uh, and that is not at all what they, again, reportedly what th how this White House handled it. There are all kinds of differing explanations about what happened on Monday night when, they're, yeah. uh, when the r reporters first started asking questions about it. Tuesday night, there are a couple of on-the-record statements. The photos come out later. Wednesday, there are varying explanations about whether or not he works there or not. This basically was a crisis that careened through the week. Yeah. That's the thing that you want to avoid. What you want to do is you want to collect all the information and you want to be decisive about it, and, uh, and they didn't do that. I want to walk through how uh, the, the person who is basically in the job that you held, the, the, this press office, how they handled the Rob Porter fallout, starting with Sarah B. Huckabee Sanders, who first addressed the resignation on Wednesday. Look, I think that was a personal decision that Rob made uh, and one that he was not pressured to do, but one that he made on his own. And then here is Principal Depu Deputy Press Secretary Raj Shah the following day saying that Porter was, quote, terminated. The White House had said yesterday that Porter's decision to leave was a personal one, mm -hmm. uh, that he wasn't pressured to do so. So would Rob Porter still be on the job today had he not decided to resign? Well, Rob Porter was terminated yesterday, uh, and his last day, or his, his, his last day, his last day was yesterday. I know he came in earlier today to clear out his stuff. Shaw went on to offer up what some are calling the administration's most honest assessment yet of how the Porter situation was handled. I think it's fair to say that, it, that um, you know, we all could have done better over the last few hours or last, last few days in, in dealing with this situation. But, um, you know, this was a Rob Porter that I and many others have dealt with, that Sarah had dealt with, uh, that other officials, including the chief of staff, had dealt with. And the uh, emerging reports were not uh, reflective of the individual who we had come to know. President Trump was reportedly unhappy with that admission from Shaw that the staff, quote, could have done better. Kevin, to uh, Josh's point here, it seems as though they did. I, I mean, I, I can't even sort through all of it myself, the, the differing stories. It's hard to watch. And as a staffer, you know, when you go into a crisis situation, like Josh said, the first thing you need to do is collect the facts and make sure you, you get everyone on the same page as to what's going on. So out of the gate, 
it was it was it was bound to fail. And so every single time someone opens their mouth, they only make things worse. And so what they need to do is they need to bring everyone back into a room like Josh said, said and do a reboot. It's the only way they're going to get past this, and they need to be fully transparent with it. I mean, it's really, really, as a former staffer, it's it's painful for, to watch. Well, Kevin, what it does seem like, and I, I agree with your assessment, what it does seem like is it seems like they are much more interested in protecting Rob Porter than anyone else. They yeah. weren't looking out for the equities of the White House. They were actually trying to keep other people in the White House from finding out exactly what Rob was accused of. And I think that's how you end up in a situation like this where you get your priorities all wrong. And I would wrong. agree with that. And one of the things I would say, I'm sorry, is that, uh, you know, that's what happens when you have a White House which has different factions in it. These aren't people who are, these aren't Trump people. They're like, you all were Obama people. Like, that's Bush people. Like, whatever they are, right. these weren't all Trump people, and that's the problem. Well, there are two things. One, I've been talking to people who are familiar with the White House staffers, and they're saying that staffers are really, really upset at the idea that John Kelly went out and defended Rob Porter, and then they and then they try to walk it back. From a staffer point of view, that makes them feel as though this this administration really bungled this. Mm -hmm. And then there's this faction that is also saying, Rob, Ke this is John Kelly, who cut off everyone's access, who said he was going to be able to right the ship, and now he's trying to, he's essentially messing up. The second thing that's going on here is, is this idea that I think the White House, even as it's saying we could have done better, which I thought was uncharacteristic of anything that we've heard from this White <laughs> yes. House. And by the way, this was his first press briefing. It might be his last after saying that. Um, but if it, but he said, he said that while also saying that we were defending the Rob, Rob Porter that we came to know. Essentially saying, yeah, we, he was a really nice guy. We didn't really know that he punched women in the face, other than the fact, other than the fact that the FBI said that he couldn't have a clearance. It's even, in, even as they say that we could have done better, they are still murking the waters. I think... It's an uncomfortable thing we have to throw out here, but we need to, which is one of the reasons they may have bungled this, is that the communications director of the White House is in a, or was in a, romantic relationship with Rob Porter. And for the first time that I can recall in my reporting around this White House, people are upset with Hope Hicks openly. I had talked to someone who said there's no way she should have not recused herself in this situation. It was obviously a conflict of interest. And part of the reason that they assume that this was bungled so badly is because of that conflict. And now I've even talked to people who say she needs to be fired because of this. I don't know if that's where the president is. I was is, able but to talk well, to her on is, the phone. It is an obvious component of, here, of this. I was able to talk to her on the phone, and she really wouldn't say much, but there's this idea that she also wouldn't defend herself. When I said, well, mm -hmm. did you help that write this statement? What did, what did you say? People are very angry at you. She just kept saying, you know, I can't talk, I can't talk. And that tells me that she obviously feels backed in the corner, but also isn't defending herself, probably because the press office isn't letting her. Mm -hmm. Well, and she has been somebody who has been known as a very gracious and graceful yeah. presence in, in the White House and previously in the Trump campaign and clearly a very difficult moment for her. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.